morning, good morning, good morning. And thank you for joining me on another episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. I am your host, Sharifa Hardy, and we're going to have an incredible show for you today. But you know what today is. Today is Friday, TGIF. And you know what I always tell you? There are two days, two shows that you don't want to be on. Now, I didn't tell my guests that, but you know, the audience, we know. You don't want to be on my Monday show, and you definitely don't want to be on my Friday show. Because Monday, I've had way too much sleep. Friday, I haven't had enough sleep. So only the good Lord knows what I'm about to say. But I know it's going to be fun, and I know it's going to be interesting. So I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do. And that is to go out and be an evangelist for the Roundtable Talk Show. There's someone in your network, someone in your neighborhood. I don't know. Maybe it's your spouse. They just quit their day job. They don't know what to do. Have them tune in to the Roundtable Talk Show. We'll let them know what to do. Someone needs this information and they won't have it unless you go ahead and share the show with them. Because as I always say, friends don't let friends miss out on the Roundtable Talk Show. So while you're going ahead and sharing the show with your friends, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our first guest, and she's going to start off the show and our day with a little mm, Miss Cassandra Coda. Cassandra is the founder of Pilates People, a completely virtual Pilates studio that began in response to the COVID-19 pandemic in March of 2020. She has been teaching Pilates for eight years and was previously a professional dancer. Movement people and the interconnectedness of it all is her life. And she is so lucky to have found a community of like-minded people who just want to work with what they've got and move wherever and however. Good morning, Cassandra. How are you? Good, Sharice. Thank you, Sharifa. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, I'm great. How are you? You are so welcome. Pilates, <laughs> that's your thing. Eight years. How did you get into Pilates? Uh, I got into it as a supplement to my dance, actually. Uh, so it was kind of the cross training. And if we're being honest, I was trained to be a rocket growing up. Um, I grew up a little bit short. So there's this little myth that Pilates makes you grow. So I started training Pilates, hoping I would gain some inches. Um, I gained one, which I needed four. So I didn't get to be a rocket, but that's where it all started. <laughs> I love it. You said to be honest. And I thought we was about to share this secret. And I was like, what is this? I was leaning in. <laughs> like you were a rocket. Like what? Well, you don't feel that? I would be proud to want to be a rocket. No? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. It was a great thing. Um, it also was the first time I was faced with having to pivot, which I think is a huge part of my life and a huge part of where Pilates people started. Um, it wasn't the original goal. It wasn't the original intention. I was handed a deck of cards and I just had to do what I could with that deck. What did you, what do I like the terminology. You were handed a deck. Life to me is a poker game. You got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. So if you can't take that deck and make something out of it, then talk to the people on the round table talk show because they can't. So are we going to get a demonstration of Pilates and what Pilates means and what Pilates is? That's why I started with you. I'm like, let's start this morning off right. Let's get some stretches, some movement. Let's let's make it happen today, Cassandra. Yeah, we absolutely can. Um, so the core pl principle of Pilates is your core. So it's your powerhouse. So everybody, if you want, you can bring your hands around your ribs. And I want you to find a comfy seat. So whatever that is for you, sitting up as straight as you can. And just take a deep breath in and see where your breath goes. Not really trying to do anything with it, just kind of paying attention to your body. And then as you exhale, again, notice what shifts. Is it your shoulders? Is it your chest? Is it your belly? Where are you feeling that breath? And then I want you to see if with your hands around your ribs, you can actually send your breath sideways. So with your inhale, you're going to let your fingers separate. And as you exhale, you're going to draw your fingers back together. So that's like the movement of your rib cage in relationship to your abdominal wall. Again, inhale wide. And exhale, draw it together. Great. Last one like that. And this one actually takes a little bit of time. So if you're still like, what are you talking about? But this is like the foundation of everything. It's your breath, your abdominal wall, that engagement, 
and your life force. Then keeping that, hands behind your head. So you're gonna think about that thing we just did. As you inhale, let your ribs open and let yourself open up your chest. So you're gonna try and look up towards the ceiling. So you're getting this big stretch through your upper back. As you exhale, let your forearms kind of close in. You're gonna round yourself down to look at your belly button and feel a little bit of abdominal engagement there. Inhaling to look up, let your head fall back, let your elbows open, ribs expand. Exhale, ribs contract. Let your elbows fold in, breathe down to your belly. Try to draw your belly button into your spine. You can take just one more like that. And just notice, maybe that feels nice on your back already. You can bring in extra little wiggles wherever you need it to go. And sit yourself all the way up nice and tall, lengthening through your spine. You can use your hands to help you get a little bit taller here. <laughs> and then gently release your hands all the way down, shake it out. The smiles on everybody else's faces during that was really great. Thank you, everybody. It, it, oh, thank you. That's, a, that's how you start out a show. That was great. Oh, my God. I feel all good. I'm going to come back to you, Cassandra. We're going to introduce our other guests, but I have some, some more questions. I want to go ahead and I do because that was good because uh, Jackie DIY is our next guest. She is the co-founder, producer, host of Eve Re, Re Everything. She's going to pronounce that one. It's Eve Re Everything. <laughs> there you go. TV mentor, published co-author of a bestseller, Pursuit 365, March 21, 2021 founder, The Real DIY, inspirational platform, bachelor of science degree in commerce, major in business management, formal training, musical theater. She is amazing. Miss Jackie DIY. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Sharifa. I am so excited. I'm so thrilled. Good morning to the rest of our guests and good morning to all your viewers. Thank you for having me, Sharifa. You are so welcome. How did that feel? How did that stretch? Because it felt good to me. That's what I needed this morning. How did that feel to you? Oh, I, I needed that because I'm actually recovering from back pain from my <laughs> former, I had a back injury. So I go, okay, this is helping me. And it really, your spiel about uh, TGIF and Friday, oh, we're going to make it work. And we started it <laughs> right. So thanks, Cassandra. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> That's my disclaimer. Just in case something goes wrong, it's Friday. I, hey, I warned y'all. I don't know. Today, I need some sleep. I've been awake for at least 48 hours. So that's my disclaimer. <laughs> Jackie, tell us about yourself. Why, why, why? Who are you? What do you do? And what are you passionate about? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your show. And thank you to Lisa, my publicist who connected us. I'm so privileged. Well, I am the co-founder of the Ever Real Thing. So that's how you say it, because the pun, uh, the, it's, it comes from the la first name of my youngest, Rhea. That show was actually created for her. And I was then just behind the scenes producing. And then I, now I am full on taking care of the show. So Ever Real Thing is an online platform where we feature inspiring stories, people who have had struggles and survived, people who have accomplishments, achievements, and we also go cover events. Uh, mostly, most of our guests come from uh, the film industry and entertainment industry, and then we branched out to advocacies like mental health, which we support very, very much. And uh, because for us, there's always room for everyone. You know, there's a niche, there's a space for everyone. We don't have to be worried that we'll have no place in the sky. I always say there, there could be millions of stars in the sky, but that doesn't mean you're not one of them or that you're not going to be one of them. And you don't want to push someone else just so you can walk on the road because we can all walk together. So every real thing is a platform for inspiration and we feature people who share their stories in the hope that we can inspire someone out there to be the best that they can be. So this is about other people. And because I am inherently a very enthusiastic person, like not that I haven't had any pains or struggles, I've survived a lot. So that's why I'm very grateful. So I thought I should create another platform this time on a more personal level. And that's the real D and the real DIY. So I always say, oh, we're famous DIY, but that's actually our last name DIY. So um, this time I'm sharing my story. Like I'm sharing how, why I'm positive, like how we can pursue health pursue health and fitness and happiness through positivity. And it's something that we can develop in ourselves. 
I was listening to Cassandra who was talking about she needed an inch of a height or something, or she needed to be taller. I wasn't supposed to talk about this, but that inspired me to share that you never should really discount yourself. You never should be hard on yourself if you're not like someone else you're looking out there up to because you don't want to compare yourself with others. You want to just compare yourself with who you were yesterday. And if you're better today, then by all means, you have made an accomplishment because I'm five, one and a half. So my kids go, drop the one half mom. It doesn't really matter. It's five, one, but I love my one half inch. So when I was younger, I applied to be a flight stewardess. And of course I didn't make it. They said, what are you going to do? How are you going to reach for the luggages? On top I said I'm gonna have a stool and they go like you're gonna carry your stool oh yeah all the way of course I didn't make it but I uh, <laughs> I made it to I won a beauty contest in a province and I was the shortest on the team I wouldn't have made it except that I talked a lot and I smiled a lot so I inspire <laughs> everyone to be happy just keep smiling and be proud of yourself like know what you've achieved and what you can do especially when you're at your lowest and uh, that's why I'm very lucky that I am one of 365 empowering Canadian women who were featured as co-authors and I brought the book here 365 and it's a beautiful coffee table book and I'm on page 55 so 365 Canadian women published by Shelley Lynn Hughes and I'm, I would never have expected to be in this book and uh, the day we offered it the first hour the book sold out on Amazon and uh if you need copies, I have a few more. <laughs> Otherwise, I can contact our publisher and uh, you can definitely grab a copy of this book of inspiring stories. And uh, I'm so happy. And uh, by the way, I'm very proud of my age. I was embarrassed of getting old back in the day. But now that I know my, my purpose is to inspire people, I've never been so proud to say i'm actually turning 60 in august so there you go oh, wow you are beautiful 60 is that what 60 looks like i love it <laughs> i love it i love it oh. you look amazing 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 i'm gonna don't don't worry about feeling 60 i mean because i'm telling you i'm not 60 yet but i just turned 45 in march and i tell people this is the most confident secure age I've ever felt in my life. So I definitely believe we just get better with time. Now I okay. am going to come back to you, Jackie. I want to go ahead and introduce a real life hero, Mr. Rich Schoss. Rich is born and raised just east of St. Louis, Missouri. He is an author of Hero Quest, graduated from Central Bible College. He's a former U.S. Army field artillery captain and a distinguished Toastmaster. Good morning, Rich. How are you? Good morning. I'm living the dream every single day. <laughs> I would love to have seen Jackie if she was a stewardess having to carry a stool around and get on top of that. That might have been actually fun. Usually flights are boring. Uh, so a stewardess having to do that would actually make it entertaining. That yes. would be pretty amazing. Thank you. You are amazing. You are interesting, Rich. Now, let's talk about Hero Quest. What is Hero Quest? So, what that was is I was living. Uh, working with those who were in a homeless shelter. This was a private crisis shelter in Washington state. And uh, I mean, it was all women. So there was 130 something women a night we were shoving into a, a apartment sort of complex. Uh, it was a, a 14 room motel. If you can imagine the U-shaped uh, motels, we put a fence in front. We protected the, the ladies who were in there and th their stories were so incredible. Uh, they were, uh, but I didn't want to, uh, so we, we made it fiction. So that way, I could protect their identity. So a lot of them were in hiding. I didn't want to, so I would change their race and heights and all sorts of different things so that you wouldn't tell who it was. Uh, but so I, I kind of combined some of their stories, put it all together. And just to show the incredible value that these women were providing to our community, their, the, the potential that was inside every single one of them. Uh, but most of us dismiss the homeless in our community. So, well, they're not worth, you know, they're not worth much there. We look away. Uh, what I, uh, just this past year, we did an event just before COVID came that we uh, went out here uh, where I'm at now in Muskogee, and we did a reverse panhandling event where we had our guests go out. They had the sign just like they were panhandling, but instead of taking money, they were handing out resumes and applications, uh, saying, hey, I want to work for you, that sort of thing. But what happened was as we're standing there, people looked away from us. 
all day long we're doing this and people just kept looking away and i thought what does that got to do to your psyche well all day people are deliberately trying not to look at you and so that's what the stories were was to force people to look at them I mean, these are daughters and sisters and mothers and all sorts of, of different titles and roles they were playing uh, but i really wanted to honor them and, and just kind of tell their stories in a way that can bring them uh, some respectability yes I learned from one of my guests, this is something she told me, I didn't go back and research it. She said, but homeless people only hear their names about three times a year. That's like nobody actually, actually calls their names. They're, they're not people to most people. So no one speaks to them and has a one-on-one -on -one conversation and addresses them by name. So I can definitely relate. Now, since we have changed the names of the innocent and the guilty, what, is there a story that stands out to you? Uh, the, we had this uh, young lady, probably 19, 20 years old. Uh, I don't know how old exactly she was at the time, uh, but we were, uh, she was just checking in and uh, it just so happened that as she was checking in, sitting there and kind of, I mean, kind of lost uh, mentally, she's just, I mean, she feels like she's never uh, experienced anything like this, but I mean, she's feel like she's at rock bottom and we're just visiting. I uh, hadn't even done any of the paperwork yet. We try to do a, a conversation first, just get to know who you are, hear your story. And, and as we're just visiting, uh, somebody comes by to donate something. And I don't remember what this woman was bringing in, but then the, the, the little young lady there is looking at the woman bringing uh, her stuff. And, and there's this connection that took place that was just uh, nothing I ever imagined. And it turns out this was her grandmother who didn't know that her granddaughter was out on the streets and that she never checked in. I mean, I, because the grandmother said, you know what, honey, I, I love you and I don't want you to have to, to be out here in the streets. Let me take you in. And so it was almost, uh, it was almost uh, like Providence just smiling down on her uh, saying this, this is a family reunification uh, that was at its very finest. I know that had to be an emotional moment. That was beautiful to be able to not only reconnect, but not have to go through this situation because you have family, you know, here in Long Beach, California, it's beautiful. I love it. But we have a lot of homelessness. And sometimes when I'm walking and I see certain people and I've gone through certain situations, I always look and I go, where are their family? Where's their mom? Where's their parents? You know, so it's beautiful when you do have the opportunity to reunite and connect people. Yeah, the family is just a huge piece for, uh, and I would say probably less than 1% of the people that I get to serve have a complete intact family. Uh, that like mother, father, and that whole piece, that, that's a huge factor. Uh, so some things we got to do to fix that uh, in our society if we want to end homelessness. And I, I believe agree. it's possible. I agree. I believe it's possible. I believe it's doable. I believe we just have to set our minds to it and decide that we want to change this problem. I also believe, and this is me in my little utopian world, that COVID may help this situation because where we are, where I live, there's so many empty commercial properties you know, because so many people went to work and remotely, they no longer need the office space. I want them to turn a lot of this commercial property into residential property and help us with the homeless situation. But that's just me. The mayor hasn't asked for my advice yet, but <laughs> if he, when he calls, <laughs> that's what I'm going to tell him. Now, Rich, I am going to come back to you. I want to go ahead and introduce our next guest. Mr. Stephen Westwood. Stephen is a copywriter, consultant, mindset coach, and author of Oh No, Not Another Goal Setting Book. Good morning, Stephen. How are you? Good morning, Sharifa. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me. How are you? I am excellent. I have some questions for you. I want to get you all motivated. But before I do that, Stephen, I'm going to do something I don't typically do. But since it's Friday, hey, that's what I do. I want to let you know, Stephen, before, not to make you nervous, but that your whole team is watching. They, they said to let you know. So I, I messed these names up. Forgive me. Nastine Batha. Okay, yeah, so... Nathine, Nastine says, hey, Stephen, your tribe is here. Go for it. Again, I don't want to make you nervous, but Liani Dorfing. Yeah, Leonie. Right. Yeah, she said, you're amazing. So be great. It's great to be able to watch. Okay, so now that we've made you nervous and everybody in your world is watching, tell us about yourself. 
who are you, what do you do, and what are you passionate about? Okay, well, first of all, I have to say thank you so much, Nestine and Leone. Um, I really appreciate your support and love as always. So I'm Stephen Westwood. I am a freelance copywriter. I've been a freelance copywriter for the last 10 years. Um, I have worked on loads of different types of projects from working with the uh, tourism industry and uh, one time it was for an adult industry, uh, just once, never again, um, not for me. <laughs> but uh, I tend to work in the B2B space as a copywriter. Over the years, that progressed into me also consulting and helping my clients perform better. In January of this year, I was asked to deliver a workshop on goal setting. And I don't know about you, but with me, whenever I've set my mind to something, I tend to achieve it. So I started researching for it. I put together this presentation and I started delivering it. And halfway through delivering this goal setting workshop, I realized that it's not the fact that we can't achieve our goals or more importantly, it's not more, it's more to do with the fact that we just don't know how to set goals properly. Um, so they asked me if I'd write an ebook, so I did. Oh no, not another goal setting book. Um, it is available on Amazon if you're interested. Um, but in this book, I do talk about concepts that stop us from being successful, concepts that stop us from um, being a barrier to ourselves and how to overcome that barrier. I also have a couple of tasks in there to help people become more abundant and think more long-term and short-term goals and how to do that. Uh, but the way I've related it is through personal stories because there are times in my life where I haven't achieved my goals. There are times in my life where I haven't always known what step is next. And one time that sticks out is when I went to Vegas, uh, there's a building called the Stratosphere, a hotel called the Stratosphere. You can actually pay to do a jump from this building. Uh, it's quite high. I think it's something like 857 feet high. Um, and you basically walk in, you get changed into the outfit that they want you to wear and they give you the safety debrief. Then you head up to the, I think it's the 100, 108th floor. Um, you walk through and they give you your rig. You, you know, you get kitted up, you attach, they attach you to it. And then they actually stand on the ledge and look down to see where it is that you're aiming for. As I stood there like this, I looked down and I realized just how high up I was. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty scary. And I can remember distinctly saying in a very calm and natural voice, oh no, I don't think I can do this. And I stepped back and the guy who um, works there, he said, uh, okay, look at me. Don't look at anyone else, just look at me. This is not a leap of faith. I'm not asking you to run off the platform and jump. It's just a step like walking downstairs. You're safe. The harness will keep you safe. All you have to do is just take one step. And I did it and it was absolutely thrilling. It was absolutely fantastic. I ended up at the restaurant at the top of the building uh, later on, looking down again. It was like, I can't believe I've jumped off this building. And that's kind of the theme of my book. It's about goal setting isn't a leap of faith. Goal setting is allowing yourself to take that one step. Once you take that one step, it starts to snowball. And the more it snowballs, the more likely you are to succeed. And it's just a phenomenal feeling when you do succeed. Yeah, Stephen, I agree. And Stephen Levy, Levy one of your, your tribe, is also agreeing with you. He says that you are poetry in motion. Now, Stephen, I heard everything you said. I was following each and every step. But you already know. Uh, let's go back to the adult industry and you writing the copy. <laughs> you thought I was going to let that go. I'm going to let I that was, go. Let's, let's go back to that, right? So... You were writing the copy for adult industry. I didn't even know they had words. I thought this was like you just watched the stuff. No, uh, it, it wasn't actually for that particular service in the adult 
industry, it was more for hookups. Um, <laughs> and so, so you put the words to the hookups. How do you find the right words to get people to hook up? It was a lot of research and a lot of embarrassment. Um, <laughs> Steven, I'm going to leave you alone because because I think you don't want to divulge too much of this story, right? So I'm, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go because I would really love to hear about your research on a Friday morning. But hey, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to break up anybody's marriage either. So I'm going to move over to Cassandra. Cassandra, we all stretched. We all worked out. We're all feeling good. Is that typically what happens after Pilates? Uh, yeah, hopefully that's the goal, that you walk away feeling stronger in our approach is one where we're trying to make you feel stronger as a human not just as a physical body and space so we want to bring you to a place where your body and who you are are actually the same instead of beating yourself up or looking at your body as some object that needs to be fixed or any of the other things that the fitness industry does we're trying to bring it all together so the hope is you walk away feeling confident strong and ready to take on whatever else you have to do in the day. Maybe some weird research. Ready for it. <laughs> oh, Cassandra got jokes. That's cool. You're funny. I like that. I'm naive. I don't know. What's the difference between yoga and Pilates? Oh, okay. Um, so yoga is a lot older. It's very ingrained. Um, it's also spiritual and slightly religious, depending on your spin on it. Pilates was created in World War One, um, so it's much younger. And Pilates kind of takes a little bit of everything. So the man who created it, Joseph Pilates, kind of looked around at all the other things happening in fitness at the time and took the things he thought were best and put them all together. Um, and also the, the focus is different. So both of them focus on breathing, but Pilates, as you as I tried to do really quickly, is about your core. So everything you're doing comes from your powerhouse. So even if you're doing a bicep curl, that bicep curl is coming from here. Um, so it's not so much about the shapes necessarily, but the intention behind the muscular movement. I like that. Rich, do you have like a morning workout? And You do Pilates, Rich? Uh, I don't do Pilates, uh, but yeah, I do have a morning workout. I, I have a I call them algorithms for every morning. So I have a rule, uh, it's almost robotic. It sounds inhuman almost. But what if my alarm goes off, immediately I get up out of bed and I go to my living room. It's if my alarm goes off, then I go to my living room. Then if I'm in my living room, I'm going to drink 16 ounces of water. And so I drink 16 ounces of water. And then if I've drank in that 16 ounces of water, I want to change into my workout clothes. And if I've changed into my workout clothes, I will then go out and do my workout. It's usually uh, 100 push-ups, uh, 15 pull-ups, and then a short run, depending on how much time I'm going to have that morning. So anywhere from a half mile to a, you know, multiple miles, if I have plenty of time for that. Uh, so that's my morning physical workout. I got other things, the mental, physical, spiritual, social, all of that uh, is done before my wife gets up in the morning. Wow. Wow. It's just interesting that you have this if. Why is it, why is it the if, like if, like you don't always get up and do this? Well, it used to be that way. So now I, I, kind of a computer program. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Brian Johnson. He has a, an app called Optimize. And so I started doing that. And one of the things he talked about is just these algorithms. So a computer, if I type, uh, if I touch the F key, F is going to come up on my screen. So it's an if then sort of thing. So I programmed myself. So I'm not using any willpower to get up and do those things and to do my morning workout. It's just, it's going to happen. I'm saving the willpower for when I'm really going to need it later on in the day. Because uh, I work with a lot of people who are going to push my buttons. And if I have, if I've already used all my willpower, I'm probably going to say something stupid. And so I got to <laughs> save my willpower for that everyday stuff. You know, it, it might be copywriting for something out of the ordinary. I think that's going to be thing. But uh, would I be prepared for something like that? If, I, if I'd already used all my willpower, I'm going to get myself in trouble uh, when I'm doing that kind of research. Yes, yeah. You might get yourself in trouble with the wife, the missus, if you try to do some of the research Stevens over here doing. Oh, there's no way I would do that on any of my computers. She would, she would sniff that out quick. <laughs> Steven, your whole tribe, all your besties came out just to find out about this research. We added Peter Hingston, who says every you're everyone's bestie, apparently. 
Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, the tribe are a networking group. They're a fantastic, phenomenal tribe, honestly. And we have a, well, they have a quiz, a networking quiz to find out what type of networker you are. I'm one of the personalities, the best friend. And it's, just, it's such an honor to be part of that. Uh, so that's what Peter's referring to. I'm so glad that they turned up and, uh, oh, I, I still feel like embarrassed. <laughs> are they making you nervous, Stephen? Because I tell them, I'll tell them all to go away. Because right now they're sharing the show like crazy, but I tell them to stop. We don't want to, you know. No, 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 keep them here. They actually make me feel a bit more relaxed. Um, not as quite as relaxed as Cassandra's exercises did earlier, but. <laughs> <laughs> but relax, that, that's wonderful. Now, again, because I was reading the comments and the people in the comments helped me do my job because one of the things that Nesty pointed out, is she loves, she says, I love that. It's just one step. So that's basically what you're, you teach, what your philosophy is in goal setting is not to focus on everything, this big picture, but just taking that one step, correct? Yeah, so naturally when you're goal setting, you have that big picture in mind. That is your ultimate vision. So when it comes to goal setting, if you're doing anything that works towards that vision, it starts with just one step. Uh, a bit like what Rich was talking about really with his, um, commands in order for him to get up and start exercising is it starts with one, just one step. If he takes a step into the kitchen, for example, or into the bathroom rather than directly into the living room, then he's already not going towards his goal. Mm -hmm. So it, it's all about how you basically train yourself to achieve all of your goals and it is doable it's a lot easier to achieve your goals as well when you have the right people backing you up uh hence the tribe <laughs> yes yeah you got a yeah. good tribe um, we need the tribe to be here every morning at 8 a.m pacific right Could just come on back because we enjoy this jackie you over there smiling what are your thoughts about the conversation I am actually loving it because it looks like we are all unified with our thoughts on goal setting and uh, having a focus. And we were talking about, everyone's talking about fitness and health and uh, which is also what my main focus is right now is uh, staying healthy. And as Cassandra said, you know, staying healthy or going, uh, doing exercises or doing physical activity is not just about the physical body. It's about mental health. Because if I may share, actually, the uh, my family, my husband and my two daughters, we started on this uh, health journey in 2017. And it was because my daughter, my youngest daughter, suffered from depression. So the reason why I'm grateful, I wake up in the morning, I say a prayer of thanks that we are alive, is because I've seen depression in the face. And uh, I've seen my daughter who is uh, highly achieved, who almost wanted to give up. And uh, we stood by her and uh, we went into fitness and health because it helped us bring back serotonin into her, into her mind, to her brain. And uh, we thought that if you're active, you're physically active, it really brings back your zest for life. And uh, that was my most recent struggle as a mom. And we're very happy she survived and she's back to music again. But as a very young mom, my eldest daughter actually got sick of viral encephalitis after which she lost half of her, her right limbs and and legs and extremities were paralyzed and she lost her vision. And she got back her vision after six months. But at 23, I was lost and everything that I was dreaming of was sort of crumbling in front of me. And my husband was there to support me. And it's just the value of family can never be um, stated stronger because you've got to be together. And my eldest is okay now. She's uh, painting and uh, so all of these struggles that I've seen as a mom like showed me that you got to be happy for every little thing you got to treasure your moments because you never know one day you could be you could hit rock bottom but you got to remember that you have the capacity to go up again so when you're at the bottom like a wheel you want to gather all those rocks and gravel and stones so that when you come back up you're tougher and you'll appreciate other people more because you know how it feels to really go through a lot so all of these make me tough and that's why I go for fitness now and health because it helped it helped my daughters it helped me helps my husband and uh, 
yeah, my doctor just took me off my hypertension, antihypertension medicine, like years ago. So I think I'm doing well. So <laughs> I teach everyone to start getting healthy and just be positive, be happy with what you have achieved so far. I like that dance. Jackie was like, I'm happy. Go, Jackie. I like yeah, that. That's the, dance, that's the dance of someone with a broken back right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good. It was, it was about the effort, you know what I mean? But what I loved about what you had to say is that when you first came out here, you were just up and you were smiling, you were happy. But I, I wouldn't have thought, and I don't know about the other guests or the audience, that you had really been through something like that. But then when you opened up and you started sharing, and especially as a mom, because I tell people, like, I'm a very, very nice pe person. I'm one of the nicest people you will ever met. But do something to one of my kids. Like, that's like, my kids are my, like, do not mess with my kids. So as a mom, I know what it's like to have your kids go through something, not just you, but your children go through it. And then you still use that as, and you're still positive. I think that's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. You are so welcome. I saw you nodding, Rich. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's, uh, the ability to overcome challenges is one of the things we have to really focus on. We, we kind of live in a world that wants to cushion everything and make everything soft. Uh, but we can't get stronger if we're not facing challenges. Uh, you don't get to lift heavier weights if you haven't lifted heavier and heavier weights. Uh, and if we don't take on challenge, I think COVID should make us all stronger in theory uh, and stronger together. And I'm hoping that that comes out to be the truth and, and people don't hide out <laughs> after yes. this is all over. No, I think we, more and more people, you know, because the world is opening up here in California, everything is basically opening up. And then I think June 15th, whatever was still closed, um, will um, open up then. But indoor dining and everything, I just hope that we don't go back to the old ways. I see so many more people, more families having dinner together at night, having more conversations. My brother lives in Australia and every week, for the last year, we would have some type of conversation. And prior to COVID, we, we would speak like maybe every eight or nine months. So I hope it's bringing people together. Stephen, what are you seeing? Are you seeing us coming together as a world, a nation? I completely agree with what you're saying. So in my case, it's exactly the same. Now, my family doesn't actually live that far away from me. We're talking 45 minutes to an hour's drive away from where I live. But obviously, throughout lockdown and stuff, I've not been able to physically go and see them. And we've spoken every day on the phone or we video call. And I agree with you. I think that the world is going to be different when it is fully reopened again, because people are valuing their time with their loved ones. There is also a shift I've noticed as well away from work comes first um it seems to be more this work-life balance where you get to spend time with your family you get to spend time with your friends and you want to keep hold of that going forward i believe anyway yes now Stephen, whoever nastine is we gonna keep her on the team right <laughs> she's she gonna be my new co-host because she said this is her comment right she helping me she says Stephen, you should tell them about the podcast this week's episode, it was perfect discussion. So what, what happened? I'm, I'm spellbound. This Dean didn't tell us. Okay, so I do have a podcast. I started it to go alongside my book uh, to discuss some of the concepts in more detail. And it's called I'll Take That Win. Uh, this week, I actually did something different. Usually, it's just me talking to the microphone on my own about these concepts. And every week, I upload on a Thursday. And this week, I had a conversation with uh, Peter and Nestine, who are the founders of Explore Protect, the networking group I was on about. And it was supposed to be their coaching session. And luckily, we recorded it because Nestine said, before we start the coaching session, I just want to say, I woke up this morning and I've got a whole new lease of life because I've been having a lot of conversations with people who have been retrenched or have been made redundant um, and they are struggling people out there are struggling because of the economy and the whole point of explore project is to save the global economy one entrepreneur at a time and if you do listen to it uh, it is available on apple and apple podcast and uh, spotify 
you will hear such a coherent, wonderful message from Peter and Mestine and a little bit of myself um, about how the global economy is, is changing, how people are changing in what they are doing and how they're going about life. And it's just, it is a wonderful discussion. So I am grateful that I managed to record that section and they said upload it to my podcast. So we'll have to check it out. We have to check it out. Cassandra, how you doing over there? I'm great. <laughs> Thanks. I'm just, it's very nice to hear everybody's own take and how we're all on the same through line. Like I'm sitting here thinking how uh, the pandemic shifted my my beliefs and my what was most important to me and my values as well. And that where Pilates people came from was literally nothing. So I was sitting in my bedroom, had just gotten laid off and was like, I'm alone for the foreseeable future. And there's a bunch of other people like that and none of them can afford this, but we all need to keep moving. So we started, or I started filming videos and putting them at the lowest price point I could, getting people in. And then they started sharing it out and it's just grown into this community of people who, I wanna say 90% of them haven't ever met each other. Um, and I have my partner, she's on now and I'm sharing her clients, she's sharing my clients. We've got a couple other instructors and I've never met most of these people and they I'm not are- sure I understand. <laughs> my watch wanted to get involved. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you're just saying, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's just very cool that even these people who don't know each other can support each other and they sign on and they want to know how their lives are going and like, how is it where you are and how is it where, and so we're sharing stories and we're sharing this experience and it just gets back to, it's all greater than just a workout. It's all greater than just you. It's all greater than just your apartment. It's it's this world view um, and yes. how we can do it together. Yes. Now my question is, are you going to continue as things open up to do it virtually or are you going to go to a brick and mortar or are you going to do a combination of both? I see a lot more people who are saying, you know what, I like having some aspect of the virtual and I will keep that. But then, you know, I still want to go in and, and, and have it in a store or a brick and mortar. Yeah. So we're currently, um, we're working to get the money to open a brick and mortar now. Um, so if you know people who want a Pilates studio in New York, share that around. Um, we're very close. Uh, but yeah, the virtual, because it was the foundation of what we did, and because now we have people who take classes with us, we've taught in Australia, the Philippines, Israel, all throughout the United States. Those people aren't where I am. And so the basis of this was to break down the barrier to entry. And one of the barriers to entry is finances. It's how you feel about your body. It's how you feel about like the stigmas around Pilates, but it's also, where are you? So if we take that off the table, that feels disingenuous to me. So we're gonna keep the virtual to be able to reach all of those people, um, but also bring the physical space because I do think there's an energetic exchange that can only happen when you're face to face with someone. And so we can do it all, why not? Yes, why not? <laughs> Steven, you're clapping. So talk to us about that point. I love that. So before the global situation, raise your hands here. Who genuinely thought that you would be talking to somebody from the UK at the same time as talking to somebody from California where the time difference is what, eight hours? Yes. Yeah. But I didn't imagine any of this. So it makes sense for, especially you, Cassandra, going forward, that you would want to incorporate the virtualness, virtual um, connection with people and have a live space. And what I love about that is the potential where you could deliver both at the same time yeah. and have that energy tangible through the screen. Um, yes. And it just, it's exciting because even if I'm alone in my living room in the UK, I can still attend your studio and be part of that. How fantastic, like the energy would be contagious. Yeah, yeah. And it's given people kind of this ownership over it. It's not, it's not mine, it's not Jenny's, it's not anybody who's working for it, it's everybody's. Like everybody's been in on this from the beginning and it's all of ours. 
And that's also something that it feels unique to this moment in the world. Mm -hmm. It is unique. So Cassandra, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a class. We got a new class for Stephen and his tribe. So what day works yeah. best for you and the tribe, Stephen? Um, I, I'll have to message you and let you know because <laughs> any day. <laughs> right, like and that's the other questions. really great thing. <laughs> it's like when everybody's schedule was open, it was like, what, what time do you, you, anytime? Anytime is good. Okay, great. So it's been pretty fun. <laughs> yes, I like it. Rich, do you feel, what are some of the changes that you see? Do you feel like you're going to continue the same way you have over um, this global pandemic? What do you see for yourself? Well, work-wise, it hasn't changed. I mean, people were still homeless. So we provided, uh, in, in some ways, it made us a whole lot better. Uh, because every year we would struggle with flus and sickness and all that. So all the COVID prevention maneuvers actually helped all that. We had hardly had a, a sniffle uh, throughout our facility. Uh, but uh, I think the thing that's changed the most is just the recognition we're all in this mess together. I mean, just this, this, this obvious thing. Uh, one, one vision that I had recently uh, it, with that same sort of thing in mind is that I, part of my morning routine is I, I'm going to get up and I'm going to read scriptures and I'm going to be praying as a, as a Christian man that, as part of my just normal routine. And I had this vision of uh, someone in the Middle East, he gets up and he's reading the Quran and he's uh, praying for me. <laughs> you know, he's praying that maybe I would change to his religion or whatever. And so he, but he's dealing with COVID too. He's dealing with all the same challenges that I am. And then he gets up and he goes to work uh, so he can support his family. You know, he has the same sort of setup I got. I got you know, two sons and a daughter, and he's, he's got two sons and a daughter. He's trying to encourage and inspire and uh, see them be successful. And, and I think that's probably worldwide. Every faith group has their people out there, and every uh, nation has their thing. And I love my country, and it doesn't mean I don't love my country. It just means that we're all in this mess together. we got to figure out how to do this together. So I'm hoping as we come out of this, that we will all begin to support and encourage and inspire one another. Uh, the physical being an important part if we're going to beat the next COVID, whatever that might be, and keep doing the things we're doing to get healthier, you know, whether that's cleaning or exercise or good nutrition, all those pieces need to be part of it. But then the relationship uh, going forward, I'm just hoping none of that really changes. Those are important pieces that we got to make sure we use them. No, I agree. Take it from someone who was raised Muslim and then just became spiritual. I can see both sides, but at the root of every religion is simply love, love for each other and love for the Lord. So I think that's beautiful. And we can tell that, that you love America because I need a hat and a shirt like yours. Like, where can I get that outfit from? Oh, it's Walmart, $9.95. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm gonna go in there and look. I'd be like, I need the hat that Rich had on this morning. I might have to show him a video, a little clip. Like, this is exactly what I want. That I mean, I had just shared the other day, God bless the USA by Lee, Lee Greenwood. Is it Lee Greenwood? Yeah, we're Greenwood. Yeah. But that's, I mean, like, seriously, I'm not kidding. That is one of my favorite songs. And I mean, I know it's Memorial Weekend, so it's another reason to share it. But I really believe that. I, I love America. I love our people. But we have to unite. Now, with this vision, I love the vision. But do, did you see yourself or do you see yourself um, manifesting it, bringing it to life in maybe a conversation that two people could have or a podcast or a show? Did you see anything like that? Uh, no, just an understanding. Uh, you know, I don't have to agree with everybody. I think that's part of our problem is that we, we have to agree in order to like and have conversation with one another. We can totally disagree, but still respect and love one another. Uh, and I don't see a lot of that in this whole mess and taking time to understand. So I've, uh, so as part of that vision, I have started to under, read more and understand more of that, of the Muslim faith, but I've also looked at other religions just to understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do the same thing with other cultures. Uh, not, so I, I try to understand what other cultures are thinking and behaving. And they do things that won't make sense to me. Because I'm, I'm a you know, middle-aged white guy in middle America. I, I have a certain cultural worldview. That's the only thing I really understand. But when I take time to understand these other cultures, I become better. And I don't get filled with hate. I don't get filled with anger and think, well, those stupid people, you know, they, they just don't understand. Right. I can actually take time to grasp who they are. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, I have some co-hosts today. So Matthew says that Nestine is basically a part of the show at this point. 
And then Matthew also says, when we go to Walmart to buy the hat and the shirt, we definitely have to buy the Captain America shield. So I forgot the shield. I apologize, Matthew. We basically have to make sure we get everything. So thank you, Matthew, for helping. Nestine says, Cassandra, we should do yoga sometime. Nestine wants to do some yoga. I don't know how we got from yoga to Pilates, but is that okay? Yeah, we can put some yoga into my Pilates. It'll be great. <laughs> we'll do it all. <laughs> I got you, Nestine. <laughs> We, we got you, Miss Steve. We got you, Matthew. Does anybody need anything else? Does anybody have any other requests that they would like to make on this Friday show? Because this is good right here. It comments, questions, anything else I can help you with? So, oh, this is good. We are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I love to do at the end of every show is just simply allow my guests the opportunity to speak directly to the audience, to everyone who was watching this show live and everyone who was watching it in the archives and let them know what you want them to take away from your appearance here today. And we're going to start with you, Jackie. First of all, thank you for having me, Sh Sharifa, and thank you to everyone who's watching. And, uh, you know, the pandemic, we were talking about the pandemic, and it really has made a lot of, it caused a lot of changes in our lives. And it's brought some uh, worst in humanity, but it's brought the best out of humanity. And that's what I want to focus on. It has made us creative. And that's why actually, that's how I created the real DIY. It's it was during the pandemic and I've heard of so many people really getting depressed and uh, you know we got to keep supporting one another and online the online technology has allowed us all to reach out to one another so like Cassandra here I actually started because I love to dance and do workouts and Zumba and all that stuff so I I have to be brave so I put out my videos out there for workouts and Zumba and uh, I have actually started to collaborate with some amazing people and uh, Cassandra anytime let me know and I put together our workout video and the difference with the workout videos that I share online on YouTube is that I put inspirational messages all over just to keep you up and running and to keep you motivated to believe in yourself. So come join me in one of these. And uh, I believe in the power of being together. We are stronger when we are together. So a lot of, uh, I've invited a lot of women and men, you are definitely invited to join me to share your messages. And I put together these messages in a video and uh, I reached out to as far as Australia and uh, Vietnam. So that's amazing. And I hope you can all stay inspired no matter how hard it is. We all look forward to bright and uh, uh, hopeful mornings after COVID is gone. Yes, I love it. I love it. And my co-host, Nastine, says she does Zumba as well. So she wants to, to work with you on Zumba. And I'll tell you right now, I was with you, Jackie, the whole show. Me and you, we, we was here. You lost me at Zumba because I went to one Zumba class and I was like, y'all doing too much. You're doing too much. Like, I need the, the, the yoga. I need the stretch. I need the Pilates. You know what I mean? Like, I, that's, that's all I got. You Zumba? that y'all doing too much but I, I love it in theory in theory i think it's great jen <laughs> thank you cassandra what do you have for us um well thank you for having me on sharifa thank you everybody for sharing everything you did i learned a lot um and thank you everybody for watching and i think the biggest takeaway from me from today and it's just kind of validation the thing that there's a Stephen Hawking quote that I'm going to butcher, but basically the sum of it is there's always something you can do. It matters that you don't just give up. Um, so coming back to that one step, coming back to the pandemic, coming back to staying together, it matters. So just sit with what you have, look around your room. What can you do with that and take that first step? Mm -hmm. But you do a lot more than that. Like you are so comfortable just sitting there on the floor, like just hanging out. Just, yeah. I wouldn't be able to do that. I need something. I need something to play with. Something. Okay, all right, all right. Well, wait, there's a pillow. You didn't okay. see the pillow. So I'm not just on the floor, to be okay. fair. <laughs> okay. I'll level with you. <laughs> so that's your Pilates pillow. That's my Pilates pillow. Yeah, we use it a lot um, in class. So that's the other thing. Our props are household items to make everybody comfy. Like we, we do work with the typical props, but really in the vein of, look around, work with what you've got and just go with it. We've been using books and pillows and blankets 
gifts and literally like you show up with what you have and we make it work. Um, yeah, but that takes my excuses away for why I don't go to Pilates. I'd be like, you know what? Exactly. I, I didn't have exactly. the Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You don't need it. There's no excuse. <laughs> Believe me, I'm, I'm, I am good at excuses. I'm not like Rich. Rich is like, I have done more before 9 a.m. than most people do all day. That's Rich. Rich, talk to us. What do you have for us? Uh, my passion is to help people get out of poverty. You know, we run a poverty reduction center. We're not a homeless shelter. We do provide sheltering, but we deliberately uh, love and, and look at these folks as individuals. Uh, so I started doing this work 19 years ago. I think I'm going to fix all these people. And it didn't take me long to figure out they were going to fix me and oh. my own way of thinking. And so we have individual plans for every single person who comes to the Gospel Rescue Mission. And we uh, visit with them. We learn their story. Uh, some of it's true. And they make up stuff sometimes. But uh, we're going to work with what they give us. And we're going to help them progress. And I asked them early on, what is your dream? What would you be if everything turned and you got to be what you wanted? And I'll just share one quick story of, of a, a man. He was uh, about 47. And he was saying, uh, I want to be an NFL football player. Well, 47, I know uh, being almost 50, I don't bounce the way I used to. So NFL career, probably not great. But his dream was football. So what we did is we got him a job initially as a lawn care person uh, at a football field. And then he was able to help on the coaching staff. So he was able to tie into his dream. And these men and women who you see on the street, I challenge you, do not look away from them. They are human beings. Uh, they are compassionate. They are loving. They have potential. And so sit down if you can, if it's safe, and, and hear their story, and then figure out how you can help them get from where they're at to that dream. Uh, th there's great movies made out of stuff like that, and you can be part of that story. Mm, so they make up stories to get into your shelter? Well, they just make up stories. That they don't want to, they have not ready to deal with their past. They're not really ready to deal with things. So they want something more interesting. You know, they, they're homeless because they quit their job and got an addiction. That, that's not a fun story. Uh, so they have this dramatic story of, uh, you know, running away from the law. We had a young lady came in just the other day and, you know, she was kidnapped and left out in the wilderness <laughs> for six days. Uh, I was like, I mean, it might be true, <laughs> but most of the time those stories aren't, just aren't true. Uh, and so you kind of take that and say, well, okay, what did I do with this story? And you try to help them live out a true story. Uh, I love it. So where can people find more information about your organization? I would just visit our website, grmmuskogee.org. Uh, you can, uh, I really would love to get more Twitter followers at our, at GRM Muskogee page. Uh, and uh, our Facebook page is always on the latest things, tell stories about our guests. Uh, we, again, we capture all their stories. And so we, we try to put those on there as much as we can. It's safe for them to do. It's not always safe because a lot of our, uh, particularly our women are in abusive situations. And if I put their face in the story, uh, then I have to deal with their abuser. If I, so the abuser doesn't know where they're at, it's much easier for me. Yes, yes. And then the, the abuser could possibly find out as a direct result. Thank you, Rich. Now, Stephen, we're going to give you the final word. Your whole tribe, your whole team is having a whole conversation. I'm, I'm distracted following them. So <laughs> talk to us, Stephen. Uh, so no pressure, no pressure. Okay, so I think that this, is, this particular conversation that we've had demonstrates that it doesn't matter what we're going through personally, it doesn't matter what we're going through collectively, there are opportunities out there. If we know how to look for that opportunity or even create that opportunity for ourselves, which pretty much everybody here has done, and we understand how our goals should align towards that opportunity or more that opportunity should align towards our goals, then it takes just one step to achieve that goal. I would say that for anybody watching, the first thing you should do as your step, if you're resonating with anybody here, is to reach out through our websites, through our social media, and connect with us. I think for that's one reason I, or another. Yeah. I, that's what I always say. So I want to thank you all for being guests on today's episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. And I especially want to thank everyone who tuned in to watch this show live, the entire tribe that tuned out to be supportive and to support everyone, as well as everyone who is watching this show in the archives. Just because you didn't catch the show live does not mean you're not important. And it definitely doesn't mean we still don't need your support because we do. Please go ahead and share this show. Let your friends, let your network know 
what is going on on the Roundtable Talk Show. But like I always say, support our guests. Our guests were here this morning to support you, to share their stories, their business, their journey with you. So please support them. Visit their website. The link is in the Facebook post. Follow them on social media. Let's get Rich's Twitter followers up. Follow him on social media. Follow our whole team. Pick up a copy of Stephen's book. Go schedule you a Pilates class with Cassandra and Jackie. DIY is going to teach you how to DIY. Don't give up. Take that first step. But support our guests. Reach out to them. Send them a message. And when you do, please let them know. Sharifa Hardy says hi. Now, if you're interested in more ways that I can help your business, or maybe you want to be a guest on the Roundtable Talk Show, please visit my website at ashsharifa.com. Until Monday morning, and Ashley, it's a happy Memorial Day weekend. Everybody have fun and be safe. That's the most important thing. If you're coming together, please be safe. Everyone have a blessed weekend. Bye now. <laughs>